Alrighty, so we're going to take a break from all these uh, massive systems that we've been working on and do something pretty simple and straightforward in this video. Um, what I want to do is I want to create a particle effect that appears behind the player, but in front of everything else. So let's go ahead and see the problem. I'm going to go ahead and go to Game Object, hit Create Other, and go to Particle System to create a particle system. And you'll see that the particles appear um, kind of probably what we want in this case. Uh, you see they appear above all the other sprites, but you'll also notice that they appear above the player, and that's not what I want. What I want is I want a particle trail to appear behind the player um, as he's moving around. So what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to design the particle system, and then I'm going to show you guys how we can make the particle system appear uh, above the backgrounds but behind the player by using sorting layers. But you'll notice that there is going to be a case where we aren't going to be able to do that within the editor itself, and we'll have to write a script to handle that for us. So let's go ahead and start off by creating the um, uh, creating the particle effect the way we want it to. So what I want the particle effect to be is I want it to be um, shooting out of the player like that. In addition, I want to go down here to the simulation space and set it to world. And the reason I want that is I want this to be a particle trail. So notice that if I set the simulation to world, the particles and I move the particle system, it will actually trail. And that's what I want. Next up, for the emission, because again, I want this to be, a, I want this, the, the trail to be um, simulated by using the world space, I want to give the speed of these particles a zero. So watch what happens when I give the speed to these particles a zero. While I move it, you'll see it starts to trail to wherever it was moved to. All right, looking good. So now what I want to do is... Indeed we are. Sweet. So now what I want to do is I want to increase their size a little bit. Um, or maybe, maybe in fact, let's uh, go ahead and do a size over lifetime. So I'll set their start size to 1, and I'll go over to their, um, uh, their size over lifetime, and I'll set that to a curve that looks like that. So you see they kind of get smaller over the course of their life. So that's what I want. Uh, let's go ahead and do a color over lifetime as well. Uh, let's do a, um, a gradient where we start kind of bluish, and then we kind of fade into maybe a, um, a darker blue. And then for my opacity, which are these handles up here, I'll want to set their alpha to zero so that they, um, they'll fade and they'll get smaller, which will give us kind of the effect we're looking for for a nice little blue particle trail. The final thing that I want to work on is the emission. So let's set the emission to something like uh, like 70 so that there's more of these guys. Um, let's see here. Yeah, 70 should be good. And then I want to go ahead and do their shape. Now for the shape, I don't want it to be a cone Let's do a sphere, and then let's take the si the radius of the sphere and bring it down a little bit. So now we have this. Now watch what happens when I move. You see there's a nice little, little trail being left behind by our player, and then these particles kind of fade. I think that looks good. Maybe I can move the, uh, the radius down a little bit more. And I'm not too happy with that blue color. Um, I think the, the color could be um, a little bit better. Let's change the uh, let's change the color over lifetime. Let's do something interesting. Let's come down here to this little barely visible drop down and say random between two gradients. And then let's set the second gradient to have a alpha of zero on the right hand side of that. And then on our other gradient, we'll set the color to maybe instead of, uh, maybe give it a little bit more, let's see here. Is yellow a good color for this? Uh, let me see it. 
You see that? Yeah, that's not too bad. All right. Uh, the last thing I want to do is maybe up the emission. Uh, maybe up the em emission rate up to 90. That's a lot of particles, but it's okay because uh, this particle system will only be active for the player. Okay, the last thing that I want to do here is I want to come up to the player, I want to expand him, and I want to parent the particle system to the player by clicking and dragging the particle system up onto the player. Okay, now if I hit play, we will see a nice little trail of particles. Uh, maybe they live for a little bit too long. So what we'll do is we'll stop the game and we'll come up here to the particle system and we'll change the duration, or how about the uh, start lifetime from five to maybe two. And that'll give us a nice little subtle effect for our player that will slowly fade. Maybe another cool effect, and I can do this for hours. Another cool effect might be going down here to our um, to our gravity multiplier and adding a gravity multiplier of negative 0 0.0 um, 0 0.0 or how about 0 0.432 point 0 0.09 so at a gravity so multiplier for our viewing audience um, particle effects are like a black hole to Nelson <laughs> he'll, he'll just get lost forever in them yeah, they're fun to do. Um, so, <laughs> all right. So I'm happy with the trail that we have going on right now. And you can see a lot of uses for this. Like, for example, um, let's say we have a power-up that makes the player go a lot faster. We might want to attach a different particle system or affect the parameters of this particle system. Or maybe if he's invincible, add another particle system. I just kind of wanted to show this basic movement particle system as an example of um, how we can go about doing this sort of effect. But we definitely have a problem. And the problem is, is that, as you'll see, the particle system is appearing above the player, which is not something that we want. We want the particle system to appear below the player, but above the background. So how do we do that? Well, you might go and say, OK, so I'll click on the particle system, and I'll scroll all the way down, and I'll sit here and I'll look for a parameter that gives me some sort of uh, sorting mode or not sorting mode, but sorting layer. And as you scroll down, you'll notice that such an option does not exist. Because such an option does not exist, um, we are going to have to write some code to allow us to change the sorting layer that the particle system appears on so that we can have it appear in the proper place. To do that, simply it requires us to add a new script so I'm going to go down here to code in my project view. I'm going to hit create. I'm going to hit create C-sharp script. And I'm going to call this um, um, sort, let's see, sort particle system. So that's what I'm going to call the script, sort particle system. Hit enter. Once I add that script to my code uh, folder, I'll jump back into Visual Studio, reload the CS proj, jump down to sort particle system, the, the file that was just made and to open it up. Then just like usual I'm going to delete all the existing code and reformat it so that we just have an empty class that inherits from mono behavior. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say public string layer name. So we're going to have to I wonder if there is a sorting layer type. No there isn't. So we have to do public string layer name and that's going to be the layer we want this particle system to be rendered on. And then the name, uh, the default, is I'm going to set that to particles. So we'll have a default value of sorting our particle systems on the particle layer. Then all I have to do is add a public void start method. Inside the public void start method, I just have to write one line of code. And that is going to be particle system dot render dot sorting layer name and I'm going to set that to layer name. Looking good? Okay, so now we have our, um, once we apply the script to one of our particle systems, it will get sorted to whatever we set the layer name to. So let's go ahead and make this default layer name exist first. I'm going to go back into Unity, and I'm going to go up here to my Layers dropdown, 
and I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to select Edit Layers. Inside of this, I'm going to open up my Sorting Layers menu, um, as opposed to my Normal Layers menu, and then I'm going to add a new layer by hitting this little Add button, and I'm going to name it Particles. Now remember where I said I wanted this to sort by default? I want it to sort above the background, mountains, tree line, and foreground. Um, do I want to sort above the foreground? Probably. And I want it to sort behind the player. Okay, so that's the particles. Now you'll notice this doesn't actually affect anything yet, and the reason it doesn't affect anything yet is because we haven't gone into the particle system yet and added the, um, uh, the component. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say add component, and I'm going to type in sort, and I'm going to add the sort particle system component to it, which of course is going to give it a layer name of particles by default because that's what I put in the code. Now watch, watch what happens when I hit play. You'll notice that the particles are now no longer visible in front of the player, but they still sort above the background. So now we have this neat little particle effect that, um, that again, this is just a demonstration of a bunch of different things that you can, um, you can use this technique for. This is just a, a, a really simple use case where we have these particles always appearing behind the player. But of course, uh, you, can make a, you can use this technique to add quite a few different effects that you might want to add. All right. So I think that pretty much is it. Like I said, this is pretty uh, simple, straightforward. All we did was we created a particle system, we parented it to the player, and then we created a script that changed the sorting layer of that particle system, uh, allowing us to use particles in our 2D games. Because otherwise, the sorting of that particle system is going to be very bizarre. It's not really going to follow any rules. Sometimes it'll appear in front of things, sometimes it'll appear behind things when you combine it with sprite renders. So in order to use particle systems, you should always have a very defined method of sorting, um, where in this case we're explicitly setting our layer name by using a script that modifies that parameter. But of course, since we created or, or modified our player by adding a child element or object to it, we have to come up here to the root player object and hit apply for his prefab. By hitting apply, um, we have now made that change for every single player object that we might instantiate, uh, particularly players on different levels. So again, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, we will be using the fixed sorting. Uh, script on all of the particle effects that we're going to add to this game. So I kind of wanted to just to get this um, uh, get this taken care of, and I also wanted to add something uh, in this section, kind of between two big systems that we're going to implement. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.